Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we're going to be doing another one of these slow SJT walkthroughs. So the idea behind this is that we're going to go through these SJT questions, but a little bit slower than what I normally do. And the idea here is to just help you understand what I'm thinking and exactly how I would use my 50-50 technique. So if you guys haven't um, seen my video before, or if you're new to the channel, please do go to my SJT playlist where you can find the 50-50 technique specifically. Um, and there you'll be able to, if you watch that video first and come back to this, this will make more sense. Okay, so let's have a go at this. So a busy clinician witnesses a receptionist in a patient waiting area trying to deal with an angry patient. The patient is shouting at the receptionist because he has been waiting for over an hour. The receptionist looks shocked by the patient's behavior and asks him to sit down. The patient slams his hand on the, rece the reception desk and continues shouting. So the impact of the patient's behavior on others in the waiting area. I would say that this is going to be very important. There's nothing here to not consider. So remember, the way that we do it is 50-50. Is A, B, or is it C, D? I'd say this is an important consideration. Is there something to not consider here? Not really. This is really, really important. So that's why I would say it's A. Okay? So the reception is safety and welfare. Is anything to do with a patient safety and welfare? Just safety and welfare in general is always going to be A. Like this is one of the golden things you can learn. This has to be A. Because once again, if you say B or any of those, that means you're saying their safety and welfare are disregarded, which is just a bit silly. So always has to be A. The perception others will have of the hospital. So this is one of those where, in general, professionalism is important. And, you know, obviously it's important to have a good outreach, you know, and it's good to have um, a positive outlook from the outside, especially the medical profession. So, you know, you've got people's lives and, you know, you've got the most sensitive information in, the, in your hands. But in this moment, right, so you've got an angry patient, the receptionist is shocked, the patient slams his hand on the desk, continues shouting, the patient's waiting as well. Is the clinician going to think, hmm, but what will people think of the hospital in this moment? No, they're not. So it's not an important thing to consider. So it's between C or D. And technically, using the 50-50 method, you would say the answer here is technically C, right? Because, oh, you know, the perception of this will have the hospital is somewhat important. But the problem is the situation is so imminent. You know, there's very clearly an angry person here that it, this doesn't matter at all in terms of making this decision. The, position, the perception of this will have the hospital matters in general, but not in this specific scenario, right? Not at all. It doesn't matter at all here. So that's why it's going to be D. The clinician's current workload. It's kind of same kind of issue, right? In general, clinician workloads are important to consider, but you've got an angry patient here and the clinician's like, mm, should I step in? I've got some bloods to do. I mean, obviously you should step in. Does that make sense, right? Yes, you've got things to do. Everyone has things to do. But the point here is you've got to prioritize, okay? If you see, I don't know, a baby in the first floor of a burning building um, that's just about to fall down or jump or whatever it might be, you know, you're not going to think, mm, I do have to get to work in five minutes, right? Like, you know, things can wait. So the idea here is the answer here is 100% going to be um, D. Like it really doesn't matter. It, if there's a, a problem in front of you, that's what matters. Like there's nothing to consider here. It doesn't matter how busy they are. If they see an immediate problem, you have to deal with it. Okay, the possibility that the patient will make a complaint. So does that really matter? So because if it did, and so this is sometimes you have to kind of, you can think about opposite scenarios as well. So if you said that this is one of A or B, or even C, I guess. That means you're kind of saying that your like your actions are dependent on the outcome, right? So that's kind of saying that like you are acting so the patient doesn't make a complaint. But you shouldn't act like that. You should act to do the right thing, not so you don't get fired or sued or get a warning against you. Does that make sense? So the possibility the patient will make a complaint doesn't matter at all. So it's not going to be A or B. And like I said, if you were say, going to say C, you'd say overall it doesn't matter, but then there's something of note here. But I would argue that's wrong, right? You, you should never act so you don't, you know, like it, it's almost kind of like blackmail in that case. It's like, okay, yeah, fine. I won't tell you, tell you off for being r loud and rude and dismissive as long as, you know, you don't complain against me, which, which is totally wrong. You should, that's not how we should, we should be acting, right? Medical professionals or any kind of professional just in general, you should act because you're doing the right thing. Right, that's important. You should always act to do the right thing. And perhaps um, I'm getting a little philosophical here, but that kind of principle can hold in life as well, right? Don't just, um, you know, the means and the end doesn't necessarily always justify the means. Okay. Cool. So on to the next set. So Kieran, a medical student, is supporting on the GP surgery reception desk when uh, he is approached by a member of the local authority, Amelia, who is investigating the absence of a child from school. Amelia asks Kieran if the child has recently attended GP surgery. Amelia insists on the information being shared as she explains that the investigation involves a complex family situation. Kieran is aware that under the surgery's confidentiality policy, 
Unless there is a court order or the parent or guardian of the child consents, you cannot reveal confidential information. I cannot share that information without consent from a parent or guardian of the child. So, how appropriate is this response? So, I would say this is an appropriate thing to say. Is there anything bad about this? Not necessarily. So, I would say this is A. Okay. I understand that this is a sensitive situation, but I'm unable to share information at this point. So, overall, is that a, a good thing to say? I would argue so. Right? I don't think it's a bad thing that he's saying. However, and this is what I mean. So sometimes I like to flick between answers. You might have seen me do that in my SJT as well. So if I got this as my first statement, I probably would have put A. But then if I had this statement next, I would have put A for this one and gone back and changed the next one to B. Because in this first statement, the thing that's very good about this one is that it explains. So it says, I cannot share that information without consent from a parent. So it gives a reason. It explains why. It doesn't just say, I can't share the information. Whereas here, it just says, I understand this is sensitive, but I'm unable to share the information. So it just basically says like, yeah, that's sensitive, can't really share that. But it doesn't explain why. Like, it, it, there's something that could be improved about this. There's something that's bad about this. So which is why it's B. But overall, it gets the message across. So obviously, obviously, you're not breaking confidentiality, but it's not incredibly amazing. Okay, does that make sense? Cool. So on to the next. Ooh. On to the next question. Okay, so I could lose my placement if I share that information. So, person's come to you, they've asked about info regarding this case, and you kind of bring your kind of placement into this. I don't really think it's an appropriate way to deal with it, right? Because, and it also, I think it brings off a bad point, which is the fact that, oh, if the placement wasn't at stake, then perhaps you would share it. Is that what they're, what they're trying to say? Like, it doesn't make any sense to me, basically. That's the bottom line. Um, so I would say that this is going to be 100% um, going to be, um, yeah, so I'd say that this is going to be um, one of C or D. I would probably, um, I mean, it would have been a bit of a toss-up. I think, I think, so the answer here is C, and I can see C. I think I would have perhaps eventually put C, um, because at the end of the day, you know, they haven't done anything dreadful. It, it doesn't worsen the situation, it doesn't really make it better, of course, it kind of it doesn't neutralize it, but it keeps it kind of equal, if you know what I mean. So I could lose my placement when I share that info. It's not really very helpful. It doesn't say, oh, you know what, this is a GDPR issue or whatever issue or confidentiality issue. But at the same time, you don't actually share any info. I could ask someone more senior how I might be able to get that information. So I'll be honest with you. I did not get the answer they got for this one, but I can see where they're coming from. So for this question, I would probably have put B or C, if anything, right? Because, you know, you're... I would have said that it's appropriate because you're going to go to someone senior, so you're recognizing, okay, you know what, I might not necessarily be able to, um, this might be out of my capacity, whatever. But the problem is that it leads the person on, because it says, I might ask some more senior, how am I be able to get that info? So it kind of says, okay, you know what, I can get that info, and I can give it to you. And so that's why they're saying it's D, which I can say, because you, you're not allowed to give that information out, right? So... For me personally, I, I would have, I, I kind of ignored that bit of it and I just thought about the seniority issue. And I, I would have put B because I would have said, okay, like, you know, you're asking someone else for help, but, um, which is okay, which is fine. Um, but, you know, I, in that, by doing that, you might be causing them hassle. So it might not be the very best thing to do. So that's why I put, I would have put B, I think, for this one. And I would have got it wrong. But of course, you know, I told you guys, I'll always be honest with you. Um, so I think that's, yeah, that, that, that's what I would have thought essentially. Okay. So I hope that this video made sense. Um, so this is just a continuation of this kind of like SJT series. And um, in these very last couple of days, um, so this video might be coming out the second to last day of the, of the UCAT period. So I hope all is going well and I will see you guys in the next video.